Let us look at the next important resource that is coal and petroleum. We have however discussed about coal and petroleum in quite detail in our last lesson while we were talking about fossil fuels. We will again quickly see the ways of uh, managing coal and petroleum. So let us quickly look at the fossil fuels, coal and petroleum. So coal and petroleum are fossil fuels. Why are they called fossil fuels? I don't think I need to explain all these things again because I have already discussed in detail about all this stuff. Still a quick review for you. Because they are formed by remains of dead plants and animals. And how are how is coal or petroleum formed? We'll talk about the entire process. However, we have talked, talked about it before. These are important sources of energy because when you burn coal, you get huge amount of energy and that energy is useful for many different purposes like generation of electricity or like cooking purposes. They are used for domestic purposes. They are also used in thermal power plant. So how are the fossil fuels formed? They were formed during the Carboniferous period. What was the Carboniferous period? It was a period long, long back. Some 360 million years ago so you can imagine how old it is so it is somewhere around the period where when the dinosaurs exist and things like that so it was called carboniferous period because of the presence of carbon in that period so coal is nothing but the main constituent of coal is carbon and it is since carbon is the main constituent that is why when we burn coal a lot of energy is emitted so what happened in, during the Carboniferous period, the trees and plants which died, they sank to the bottom of the oceans. Okay. Then in due course of time, they formed a layer of spongy material called peat. So the dead remains of trees and plants which went to the bottom, they formed a spongy material called peat. This peat got covered with sand and clay with passage of time. With passage of time, more and more sand and more and more clay got deposited over the peat. As a result, the peat got squeezed and released water. Now, after releasing water, the squeezed peat gradually formed coal, oil or natural gas. Now, do you think that this process was very simple and quick? It was not like that. It took several hundreds and thousands of years to form coal, oil or natural gas. Right. So this was basically how fossil fuels are formed and that is why they are known as fossil fuels because they were formed by the remains of dead plants and animals. Now what are the disadvantages with fossil fuels? We already know the advantages, right? They, they emit huge amount of energy and that energy is used for, is used for many different purposes. But what are the disadvantages involved? The first one is air pollution. The amount of smoke which is released on burning coal is too much. It, it pollutes the air, it pollutes the atmosphere. Acid rain, what is acid rain? Because of the, the, the products which are emitted on burning the fossil fuels, when you burn fossil fuels, things like carbon oxides, oxides of carbon, oxides of nitrogen and sulfur are produced. And these things are acidic oxides and what they do? When these things are emitted in the atmosphere during rainfall, they combine with the rain and the rain is known as acid rain. This acid rain is extremely harmful, not only to the life forms, but it also has many other disadvantages like it tarnishes the marbles, it tarnishes buildings. So acid rain is something which is hazardous and is it, it causes different types of diseases in, uh, in different life forms. The greenhouse effect. What is greenhouse effect? I have spoken about greenhouse effect in detail in our previous lesson. Greenhouse effect is something like the greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, methane. So what are these greenhouse gases? These are the gases which traps the energy from the sunlight within the atmosphere. And as a result, the more and more greenhouse gases you have, the more and more heat will be trapped in the atmosphere and the more hotter the atmosphere will become. Now burning these fossil fuels produces these greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane. So it increases the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and as a result it causes global warming. I mean it warms the atmosphere. 
right so these are some of the major disadvantages with fossil fuels and we see the major disadvantage is that it 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 harms the atmosphere in one or the other way either by air pollution or by acid rain or by greenhouse effect whatever it is it is actually uh, harming the atmosphere right so the usage of fossil fuels has alarming environmental consequences so what is the conclusion the conclusion is that coal and petroleum should be used judiciously so that they are left for our future generation because the advantages are obviously there by burning coal and petroleum we get so much of energy that is harnessed for electricity generation and all and we need electricity in huge amounts right so we we should make use of coal and petroleum but we should not use coal and petroleum to a very large extent so that the advantage which we are getting will get compensated by the disadvantage that means in on one side we will generate electricity on the other side we will pollute the atmosphere to such extent that existence of life forms will become difficult so when life will i mean if life only doesn't exist in there uh, exist on the planet then what will you do by generating electricity right makes sense so we should use coal and petroleum judiciously so that the atmosphere is not completely destroyed at the same time so that this coal and petroleum are left for our future generation also to use because again coal and petroleum are also in limited amount right every day you are not getting huge tons and tons of coal and petroleum so you have limited stock but you have unlimited need so we should make use of it judiciously so that it is left for our future generation and also we do not pollute the atmosphere unnecessarily so let us now by the, by now we have almost covered the management of the most important natural resources now when i talk of judicial use of resources or judicial use of natural resources sometimes i mean small small things which we can do in our day to day life i mean how can we contribute to management of natural resources we can contribute in so many different ways for example we can prefer stairs over lift suppose if we have to go to now in case you have to go to the 18th floor of a building in that case it is difficult to use stairs so in that case you you are most welcome to use lift but let us suppose if you want to go to the first floor or second floor many of the times people become too lazy to walk even one or two floors and they use lift so when you use lift you are actually the lift is nothing but an electronic apparatus so you are actually making use of electrical energy and wasting that energy correct so we can prefer stairs over lift we can prefer tube lights over bulbs because bulbs consume more power so again you are wasting more electricity there so instead of you because all we need is light so we you we get light from tube light as well so tube light is something which will need which will consume lesser power so we can prefer tube lights over bulbs prefer cycling over bus bus will consume so much of fuel but if you cycle the first thing is you remain healthy cycling is good for health you you remain fit and fine and at the same time you save that amount of fuel prefer bus over car now let us suppose i mean cycling doesn't solve the purpose every time now let us suppose if you have to travel some 30 kilometers you cannot cycle for 30 40 or 50 kilometers right that becomes strenuous so in that case you can again prefer bus over car because bus will utilize some amount of fuel but at the same time it will carry some 50 passengers but car will utilize almost the same amount of fuel and it will carry just one passenger right so it is always prefer to use bus over car similarly while commuting to your school or your office you you can always prefer car pooling let us suppose there are six of you staying in the same locality and you are all going to the same school instead of the fact that all of you go by your own car it is better that you just all of you the six of you go in the same car so at least you save the fuel of the remaining five cars so these are some of the ways these are some of the small efforts which when taken together by everyone helps us to save a lot of energy i mean by maybe by cycling a 1 km i am saving a very small amount of fuel but if that practice is followed by every person all together we are saving a lot of energy 
right so these are some of the small small things which we can implement in our day to day life so that we can also contribute or we can also uh, give our part or we can perform our best to conserve our natural resources sustainable management is the gist of this entire lesson so what we should always concentrate on is sustainable management that means managing natural resources in such a way that they can be sustained for the future generation so that they do not get depleted or they do not get extinct so we have to manage the natural resources in that way so what is such sustainable management management of natural resources in such a way that basic need or dependency from these resources is met it is something like i mean managing the resource doesn't mean that you do not use that resource you use that resource to meet the basic needs for example let us suppose you need uh, water for your survival so you make use of water you utilize water for drinking purpose for cooking for washing clothes you <coughs> you make use of it but you do not waste water do not overuse it so use it for the basic needs our future generation can also make use of them we should also i mean as soon as we stop wasting things then what will happen the things will remain there so the stock will remain there for our future generation to use it use of these resources do not cause too much harm to the environment if we make too much use of these resources for example if we burn too much of coal we we should burn coal only to that extent what we need right but if we start burning too much of coal we are causing more and more harm to the environment unnecessarily first of all we are getting rid of the resources the limit of coal is also increasing at the same time we are causing more harm to the environment so we should make use of natural resources in such a way that our basic needs are met it is left for our future generation and the environment is not harmed to a large extent so this is known as sustainable management and all of us should join hands and help in managing natural resources in a sustainable way so that's all in this lesson so see you all in the next lesson thank you please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thank you once again